Hello, my name is Peter Galancher. I'm a senior level designer at CD Projekt Red, and I would like to welcome you to an excellent gameplay presentation we have for you today. I really hope you enjoy what we have in store for you. Have fun. Many of you might already be familiar with this guy. He's Geralt of Rivia, our main protagonist. He's a witcher, one of a dying cast, a professional monster slayer. He's back from a hunt, carrying a mighty trophy on his saddle. You might have seen the fight with the griffin. This is a direct follow-up to that adventure. At this point, players are several hours into the game, so they should be familiar with how the game handles. We are near the city of Novigrad, the biggest city in the world of the Witcher. We are currently en route to a meeting with Dijkstra. He is the former head of Redanian intelligence, now a spy and a very powerful mobster. Several thousands of inhabitants, houses made of brick, paved city streets, warehouses, all the desirable guilds and artisans, banks, the breathtaking temple isle, inns, brothels, and the biggest seaport in the north. This is Novigrad. It's a living, breathing ecosystem of thousands inhabiting its corners. Everyone in the city, all thugs, beggars, lords and peasants have their day and night activities and pastimes. They make all of Novigrad's four districts unique, characteristic places, worlds within a world to explore. Take the fish market on the other side of the canal, for instance. You can of course buy fish there, but if you meet the right people and pay the right price, you can get some nice and juicy contraband weapons, armor and ingredients to your concoctions. This place is ripe with quests to embark upon. Be careful though, pick one and another may perish. Your choices will heavily affect how other adventures in the city are born or die. If this presentation were about discovering all of the Cloak and Dagger gameplay, we'd be sitting here for quite a while. So instead, let's press on and try not to hit the pedestrians on the way. Let's play Burn the Witch. We are getting closer to the place where we can talk to Dijkstra. He is the one who ordered the griffin to be slain. We have done our part of the deal. Now it's his turn to provide us with some information. <laughs> Greetings, Dijkstra. How's your health? You're late. Fulfilling my end of the bargain. Brought you the head, just like you wanted. It's hooked to my saddle. Somebody should get it. Hmm. I've fulfilled my end as well. Dug up that bloody information you wanted. What have you learned? Your ashen-haired lass with the scar on her cheek. She's presumably in Velen. Was seen there in the company of a creature that goes by the name of Johnny. Don't laugh, but to believe the witness's tale, this being looks a bit like a child and lives in some burrow in the woods. Probably a bucka or a luton, but she's in Velen. Damn it. Geralt, is she who I think she is? Thanks, Dijkstra. That was coin well spent. Nice talking to you. The time I was on my way. Dijkstra tells us that the person we are looking for is deep south in Velen, nowadays only going by the name of No Man's Land. She was last seen there with Johnny, a peculiar creature living in the woods. It's quite far away, so we'll use fast travel to get there. We'll visit one of the signposts we can use to get to our destination on the outskirts of the city.
everything you see, every village, tower or point of interest can be explored in the game. There are no invisible walls to limit your adventure. Fast travel is available to locations you've already unlocked by visiting them, and luckily a spot close to where we want to get has already been made available to us by our preceding adventures. Traveling to our destination on horseback would have taken us at least 15 to 20 minutes at full gallop. We're quite far from where we are heading now. Alright, we have arrived in the heart of No Man's Land. It's a war-ravaged place, where the only law that exists is that the strongest prevail. We are deep in the swamps, in the south of the land. A dark and unforgiving place, with a significant chance to stumble upon danger. Let's look around, see what the place has to offer. We'll use our Witcher senses to get a better understanding of the surroundings. So Dijkstra told us we are looking for a small, childlike creature. And those small footprints might very well lead to his hideout. Pretty cozy shelter. The creature Dijkstra mentioned must live here. Seems like we have stumbled upon a peculiar hole in the ground, Johnny's cozy hideout. Let's knock on the door. Johnny? Don't be afraid. Start. Where did you see her? What was she doing? It's important to me. Why not? Lost your voice? Can I help you somehow? So Johnny needs us to help him regain his voice, and since it's information we are looking for, it seems to make sense to help him in his time of woe. He's asking us to follow him, so let's do so. Ah, wildlife. When nearby villages or guards want to dispose of dead bodies, they usually dump them in the swamp. Stay close to me. Some of these bodies come back as the creatures you just saw. They are called drowners. They prey upon travelers and adventurers, much like us. This the place? Let me look around. Something's on the ledge? Something that'll get you your voice back? Guess I gotta make this climb. Johnny apparently wants us to scale the mountain, so let's see what awaits us at the top. We'll look for spots that we can climb. 
There are many, many paths leading to key points in the land with all sorts of cool stuff to find in every nook and cranny. It's really worth to explore all of them. The mountain top seems to be riddled by harpies. This is an excellent opportunity to equip Geralt's newest addition to his arsenal, his small crossbow, Gabriel. It comes with fully customizable ammunition, just don't forget to keep count. Alright, let's go. Let's spend a minute now to appreciate the view. To give you a rough idea of the size of the land, Novigrad, the city we came from, is 14 times further away than that huge tree in the distance. Harpies are known to collect all sorts of shiny valuables, much like crows. They are only slightly bigger and a little bit more annoying. It's advisable to check out their nest for loot. So let's get back to Johnny now. Let's pick a different path because it looks pretty cool. Shenanigan is like licking snails through a cloth. Thank you for this, noble whoever you are. Long be your life. Hang on a minute. I helped you, now you help me. I'm looking for a young, ashen haired woman. See anyone like that? Did I ever? Remember it as if it were yesterday. As soon as I woke, I went to empty my bowels, my favorite part of the day. Defecating to the sunrise, downright glorious. Suddenly, heard a bang, so loud it couldn't have been me. And that lass appeared, out of nowhere. Young, ashen-haired, just like you said. Wounded and panting to boot. She raced off towards the children's huts, quick as if the crones were after her. I yelled some unpleasantries. She disturbed my mourn. Sadly, I'd lost my voice, so I don't think she heard me. Maybe whoever lives in those huts will know something. Oh, that old hag don't speak to strangers, and you're a stranger. Will she talk to you? I have spoken to her, got my ways. So be it. You helped me, and I'm no bore. Come with me. All right, Johnny's got his voice back. I'll let you decide whether it's a good thing or not. Most importantly, we're getting closer to finding the ashen-haired girl. Let's see where Johnny's taking us. I need to sing to Gran. That ought to calm her. Little Johnny softly gazing, fire waning pale. Pop a spark jumped out and whispered, listen, I'm a tale. 
You got your voice back. It is. Though I seem to have lost an octave somewhere in the process. I shall look for it when I get home. You're not allowed here, Johnny. You shouldn't have come. Calm down, Gran. Don't get angry. It's not good for you. The woman I asked about earlier. Forgive me, Gran, but this fellow absolutely must talk to the ladies. No, she's not allowed. Please, it's important. The fellow will be quiet. Gran, please hear me out. I found little Yagna when she got lost, did I not? Did I break Jenny's fever too? I did. I ask anything in return? No. Didn't even fuss about my stolen voice. Well, now I want something. Gran, help this fellow. Because otherwise he'll pester me day and night, even during potty time. His lass is missing. Perhaps the ladies can help find her, eh? Well, since you put it that way, Johnny, I'll help him. Come with me. Johnny's a good, good lad, though the ladies don't like him. No, foul creature, they say. Don't like him. Who are the women in the tapestry? Those are the ladies. Ladies lovely, with power o'er all, beseech I thee. Answer my call. Before you a worm crawls, wretched and small. How dare you disturb our rest, woman? I'm looking for the woman with ashen hair. I know you met her. Where is she? Oh, he's impatient. Perhaps he only likes ashen-haired girls. It's clear you met her. Tell me everything. That was blunt. Well, perhaps it's for the best. Tell me, have you got bollocks? Do you fear woodland beasts? Oh, hard times are upon us, white-haired one. Brother has turned against brother. The land is soaked in blood. Evil reigns stronger than ever before. A dark power has surfaced near Down Warren. It feeds on hatred and disdain. Destroy the beast, and we will be grateful. Tell you all we know about this ashen herd maid. Dark power? You need a knight errant, or a witch hunter, not a witcher. The alderman of Down Warren will tell you all. Remember to collect payment from him after you complete your task. And now our servant will bring you the dagger. I'll talk to the alderman, but I can't promise anything. Move, woman! Give the young man the dagger! And you, white one, return only once you've completed the task. Oh, your mistress, right, on me way. Dagger, gotta bring the dagger. The dagger, for you. Ladies told me to give it to you. Here it is, the dagger. Place the alderman's payment on the stone. Stone bear, stone shear. The lovely ladies of the wood have spoken. We better make haste over to the village of Downwarren and speak to the Elderman there about this task that we have been given. Cook gave him a licking, strung him by his feet, cooked them blood and empty, stripped his skin off clean. Martin said how tasty this That's a lot of unattended children. This looks to be one of the orphanages in the land, a direct result of the war ravaging the surrounding areas. 
The one to fetch the kindlings, they... If you pay attention to the environment, you might often stumble upon useful elements to be used to aid you in combat. Those gas clouds can be ignited using the Igni sign, hopefully frying anyone inside the blast radius. But I'm pretty sure we'll use that later. You've probably noticed the plethora of magic spells we used. They're called signs, and they can come very handy during combat. Let's see what we have at our disposal, bringing up the radial menu. Erdin on the left is used to trap enemies. Quen creates a one-hit shield. Igni is a fire spray sign. Axie can charm them to fight along your side or stun them, and Ard is a powerful air blast. We seem to be getting close to Downwarren. Let's look for the Elderman. Nice village. Boy, a real pearl of the swamps. If you say so, recognize this dagger? Aye, master. I didn't know you belonged to them. I'm supposed to help solve your problem. Tell me what it is. Just the essentials. The war awoke an ancient power. An evil one that feeds on bloodshed. Nightmares haunt our nights and days. Folks sleepwalk from their homes, never to return. Under the tree on the Whispering Hillock they lie. Unburied all fathers, sons, daughters and mothers. Folk are afeard to move them. You must go there. The dark powers must be cast off. I'll look around the Whispering Hillock. You be careful, Master Witcher. Don't you treat this evil light. The Elderman needs our help at the Whispering Hillock before the Witches will help us with our task at hand. There's evil afoot, so let's make haste. These parts of the swamps might seem to be a peaceful part, but you should never let your guard down. It's not a safe place to travel. Ah, more wildlife. 
The thing we killed is called a water hag. Nasty thing, dwells in wet places, does not like fire at all. Alright, we seem to be getting closer to the whispering hillock. We should probably use our witcher senses here again. We could stumble upon some clues helping us getting to the bottom of the situation. Claw marks. Wolves. I should look around. This is the screen you'll probably spend most of your gameplay time on. This is where you equip all the armors, weapons and useful items you acquire throughout your adventures. This is the character screen. Most importantly, we'll set the best weapons for each of Geralt's two signature swords. A steel sword, most effective against human opponents, and a silver sword, a lethal tool against monsters and beasts. The powers that protect me, they sense whence you come. Who are you? We definitely seem to be on the right track. Be gone! Be gone! Be gone! The powers will not relent. The werewolf was not the source of evil the elder man was talking about. Let's continue scouting the area and let's check out this cave opening. Be gone. Be gone. Be gone. The main path seems to be obstructed by some roots and they seem to be immune to Igni. So let's look for an alternate path. We mentioned that there are many ways to explore the world of the Witcher. And diving is now one of these. We seem to have stumbled upon a hidden path. Let's see where it takes us. Here, in fetters of magic, 
I wondered endlessly. A labyrinth of leaves. The children. I know all. I know what to bring with them. Free me, please. I must tell. If something threatens the orphans, I'll help them myself. The children have been taken. Free me, please. I can't be a gale. A gallop unchained. I shall see them. Only I can. This is one of the many points in the game where you can affect the course of events. You might choose to investigate what the Tree Spirit wishes us to help with. Or we can fight it and see the Witch's desires through. If you ask me, the Tree Spirit looks very untrustworthy. I'd rather see it burn. I don't believe you, Spirit. Too many claim you're evil. Your words alone, not enough. Dare me. But then you will rise. All the powers of nature. is the fruit of our efforts. Let's tell the elder men that we got rid of the evil that was haunting the whispering hillock. Solved your problem. Just in case though, avoid the whispering hillock for a while. Cannot be. Where's something lurking there? An evil spirit had possessed a tree on the hill. It was responsible for the killings. The crones, or the ladies of the wood as you call them, said to remind you about payment. Take it you know what they want? Aye, I do. Give me the dagger. Be back soon. There's payment. Take it to the ladies, will you? Why do you cut off your ear? Put it out your mind, master. You soon be leaving and we must tarry on, our young'uns and their young'uns after them. No gods nor masters watch over Velen. The land is no man's. He who wants to survive must seek his own protectors. Weapon, young man. He's even lovelier in real life. Mm. In real life, you're different than you were in the tapestry. Well, bring it here. You are to bring it, not ogle it. As a rail, terrified, exhausted. She could barely stand the poor thing. 
we cared for her as best we could. Like she was our own daughter. Wasted affection. She proved a very naughty girl. Mischievous, stubborn, and selfish. She burned me. Don't believe you. They say you always keep your word. So tell me everything, exactly as it happened. We shall tell you, brave boy. We knew someone special was to arrive. We read beast entrails, saw the omens. We would glimpse her likeness, a mirage in a puddle. She came from the lower swamp. the omens had spoken of. A child of the Elder Blood. The sown seed that would burst into flame. Blood of the treatress. 